National Research Foundation Bill 2023. The context being, the Union Cabinet has approved the National Research Foundation Bill 2023 in the Parliament. It will establish National Research Foundation as an apex body to provide high-level strategic direction to scientific research and development in the country. Now, the first thing that you need to understand is why R&D is important for a particular country. See, when you look at India, we only spend around 0.7% on R&D as a percentage of GDP. It is quite low as compared to the other BRICS nations. Brazil and US, uh, Russia spend around 1%. China spends over 2%, etc. So in this regard, we need to understand that why India needs R&D. First is for economic growth. So if India really wants to realize its idea of 5 trillion dollar economy, then we need to make sure that our expenditure on R&D is around 2% of the GDP. Then in order to enhance our defense capability, we also need R&D. Given the fact that you know different type of technologies are being developed by other nations like drone technology are being developed robots are being developed so in this background we also need to you know enhance our defense capability for example as we did under mission shakti we showcase our anti satellite capabilities then we also need r and d investment in order to addressing the emerging socio economic challenges which our countries is witnessing. For example, we came up with the vaccination for rotavirus. We came up with the, you know, different set of renewable energy, you know, resources. So in order to tackle the specific socio-economic challenges which India is witnessing, we need R&D. For example, how we can address the water stress which is being witnessed in the Haryana and Punjab region. Okay. Then, we also need R&D in order to realize the idea of Atmanirbhar Bharat. Because according to SIPRI report, what we have found out that between 2018 and 22, India was one of the largest importer of arms. So, in order to address the trade imbalances and in order to realize the Atmanirbhar Bharat, we need to invest, we need to invest in R&D. And lastly, we also need to make sure that our country is ready to meet the emerging challenges and it is ready to deal with the emerging technologies like artificial intelligence, big data analytics, machine learning, etc. Because the other countries are making the requisite investment in that. And if we are, you know, not coping up with that pace, we would not be able to address the challenges which we would be witnessing on account of great advancement which the other nations are making in, the, in this regard. So in this regard, the R&D is quite important for a particular country. Now, let's look into the key indicators that how India performs as compared to other countries. Now, when, in, when it comes to expenditure on R&D, I told you, it is around 0.7%, okay? Top 10 countries with maximum expenditure on R&D. So India lies around here and it is the Israel which makes the majority of the investment in R&D. When it comes to USA, it is around 3%. When it comes to Korea, it is around 4%, etc. When you look at the women in science, what we witness is women, you know, hardly participate in the STEM field. Science, Technology, Engineering, Mathematics domain. Then when you look at the doctorate awarded in Science and Engineering 2021, what we witness is when it comes to veterinary science and agriculture and medicine, here very less people are awarded doctorates. Then patents filed in the country, here also India's performance is quite miserable. China stands here, India stands here. So, it, China is filing majority of the patents. Then, doctorate produced in 2018. Here also, India's performance is quite bleak. And when it comes to research per million population, with this you can understand that we have very 
less skilled human resource when it comes to the science and technology domain. Now let's look into the state of science and research in India. So the government when it comes to government funding in R&D it is done by two modes. Core grants and extramural grants. So core grants most of the expenditure is done through core grants. So in this very year this amount of money was spent on R&D and three major receipts of this fund were DRDO, Department of Space, Department of Atomic Energy. When it comes to extramural grants, these are given by Department of Science and Technology through the Science and Engineering Research Board, which is now being done away with the advent of NRF bill. It serves as the R&D aspirations for central universities, state universities, including agriculture universities, colleges, etc. and even national laboratories. Only 0.65% of country's GDP, out of which 41% by the public, and 0.24% by the private funding is being spent on R&D. These investments are much lower than those being made by the developed and newly emerging economies of East Asia, more than 2% of the GDP. And as we discussed right now, in order to realize the idea of $5 trillion economy, India also needs to invest around 2% of its GDP on R&D. Women comprise only 18% of the total scientific researchers in India, while globally this number is around 33%. Now the thing that we need to understand is what are the challenges we are witnessing when it comes to R&D? Why we are not able to increase the you know amount that is being spent on R&D? First, first is the fiscal constraint which are faced by the government because the government also need to take care of other socio-economic you know requirements like addressing hunger, poverty, health related issues etc. Another reason being, there is low private sector contribution. So when it comes to India, less than 40% of the investment in R&D is made by the private sector. But when you look at the advanced countries like Japan, USA, there's more than 70% of the expenditure on R&D is being done by the private sector. Now, why it is so that the private sector is contributing so less when it comes to R&D in India? It is because of weak patent system. So, they are always fearful that whatever invention they are going to make, that would be copied by another company and they would be getting the benefit. And the company which actually made the investment and which actually, you know, came up with a new invention, that would not be able to get the requisite benefit that it should get. Then, it is also on account of weak industry academia linkage. Then when it comes to R&D investments, these are huge capital intensive you know, investments and they have a long gestation period. So that is also one of the reasons because they take a lot of time to you know, give the results. So that is the reason when it comes to India, the private sector participation in R&D is quite low as compared to what we are witnessing in other developed nations. Then there are also issues with our educational institutions. What are the issues? Less than 1% of our educational institutions are actually engaging in high quality research work. Another reason being that they are not modifying their curriculum and they are not making requisite changes in their pedagogy. So that you know hinders the development of innovative mindsets among the students who are studying in the educational institution. Another reason being center government exercises, you know, strict control when it comes to the universities and the educational institutions that are there, especially with regard to the fiscal discipline. So since the academic or educational institutions do not have the requisite finance. So they are not able to, you know, divert the requisite amount of resources for carrying out innovations and, you know, research and development. And lastly, there is lack of, you know, commercialization of the research. So when you, you look at India, majority of the investment is done with regard to basic research and not on application based research. When it comes to basic research, these are basically 
research which are not you know oriented towards a particular application for example research in pure mathematics which enabled us to understand okay a bit a theory in a better manner a theorem in a better manner but applied researches are one which we need to look forward to because applied research are done with this intention that we are doing this innovation for a particular application okay which helps in further economic growth and when it comes to you know educational institutions there is lack of industry academy and linkage so when it comes to educational institution they are more focused about publication of the research rather than commercialization of that very innovation okay so these are the challenges that we are witnessing when it comes to r and d in india now let's look into the nrf bill now the bill seeks to set up national research foundation which would be a centralized body to fund scientific r&d in the country by providing research grants to individuals seeding growing and facilitating research in indian universities as well if the bill is passed the science and engineering research board act 2008 will be repealed and subsumed by nrf so the serb act established the serb as a statutory body of department of science and technology and this body played a important role in building the research ecosystem in india by granting funds fostering young researchers recognizing and rewarding research excellence etc the idea of nrf was first recommended by kasturi ranjan committee in 2019 draft educational policy draft national education policy highlighting the lack of conducive research ecosystem and underinvestment when it comes to research in india this recommendation was adopted by national education policy 2020 as it suggested to establish nrf for managing competitive grant system for r and d across all indian universities and institutes involved with higher education especially the less well heeled institution as they were facing the issue of expertise funds and infrastructure now why this need was there because as we discussed there is low spending on research less contribution from private sector as i told you in advanced countries more than 70% of the funding is coming from private sector but that is not the case in india then competitive grant system with increasing number of institute universities the number of doctoral students is also increasing significantly however the overall funding under extra mural grants which are given to universities has remained static resulting in poor doctoral training okay that is the reason we are witnessing issue of low uh, availability of skilled manpower or human resource accelerated research to accelerate research in new and unexplored areas and motivating people to take up research as profession because what we witnessed is when it comes to the researchers in india the number is quite less as the number of research per million population in india is nearly 262 which is extremely low compared to other countries like brazil south africa and mexico and what happens when you have poor supply of skilled manpower it impacts the number of patents that a particular country can file it impacts your contribution to the scientific journals and that is what we witness in case of india as well indian researchers published only 5% of all the articles in science and engineering journals whereas chinese researchers contributed around 23% while when it comes to us researchers they accounted for 15% in 2021 india stood at 6th position in the world by registering this many of patents but it was nowhere close to 16 lakh patents that were filed by china and about 6 lakhs in the us that year so you understood that when you have poor supply of skilled human resource then the number of patents that you are going to file and your contribution to scientific journals would get impacted and ultimately the number of innovations that you are going to make would also get impacted thus the government has introduced nrf to increase research funding research spending attract private sector investment etc now when it comes to funding it would be operating with a budget of 50000 crore for 5 years starting from 2023 28 of this 28% would be provided by the government which would eventually increase to around 20000 crore per year and the remaining 72% would be coming from private sector so as we discuss this is being done in order to improve or enhance the private sector funding when it comes to r&d in india out of government share this crore will be given by serb budget it would be having a governing board which would be managed 
these uh, you know funds would be managed by a governing board which would be consisting of prime minister of india as the ex officio chairman union minister of science and technology and union minister of education as ex officio vice chairman 15 member executive council which would be consisting of secretaries or representatives of ministries that fund research as well as directors or representatives of other major funding bodies such as department of science and technology De department of atomic energy department of biotechnology etc the president to the board will be selected from among the council members the board will formulate a future road map for nrf based on inputs from all stakeholders and submit its report to the prime minister the president of the board along with vice president would be accountable to the funding agency and to the government so it is this governing board which would be deciding that the funding which is you know there under this nrf bill this funding would be allocated to whom this decision would be taken by this governing board and what is the significance of this nrf bill the significance being democratization of scientific funding finding solutions to bigger problem because nrf will promote research not just in natural sciences and engineering but also in social sciences arts and humanities then because when it comes to india what we see is the majority of the investment in r and d is made in the domain of defense and health and not in the domain of social sciences so here the nrf would be playing a very crucial role then providing an efficient and integrated management system for the implementation of missions such as supercomputer mission quantum mission etc ease of doing science by reducing the time for applying for grant till approval digitally processing all the paperwork all the financial queries would be handled by nrf and financial department of the institute timely release of money for research so that the institutions educational institutions do not witness a financial crunch or a resource crunch and addressing chronic issues issues like no uniform infrastructure for scientific research lack of uniformity in funding etc now what are the concerns which are raised with regard to this very bill although the nrf bill mentions timely disbursal of funds as we discussed right now with regard to educational institutions and a proper mechanism is required to facilitate and implement it but we need a proper mechanism in order to make sure that the fund that you are providing it is diverted towards let's say applied research that is what which is needed right now okay then there is a need for explicit spending guidelines for researchers which provide flexibility to work along with making them accountable because as we discussed one of the challenges why we are not able to you know promote the r&d ecosystem in india is the central government exercise physical discipline when it comes to the educational institutions so in this regard you you want to maintain the accountability fine you come up with the explicit spending guideline for the researcher but give them the requisite flexibility as well so that they could spend the funds you know according to the demand of that particular research that is required it is unclear how the government would rate this would be raising this amount of money from the private sector for funding nrf and how transparent the whole system be because as we discussed on account of weak patent system on account of lack of industry academy linkage on account of you know long gestation period of the r and d investments the private sector are not ready to invest so although the government has stated that we are going to increase the private sector you know participation when it comes to r and d ecosystem but there is no clear road map how are you going to raise this amount of money from the private sector why would they invest this much amount of money on this regard the bill is not clear now what is the way forward nrf along with focusing on boosting the investment should also focus on quality of the work being done and its impact on india research output publication and patent registration and improving india's position in scientific community across the world because ultimately what matters is what is the quality of r and d work that you are doing is it basic research is it applied research or what it is then r and d across state universities and institutes should be given preference to motivate students to take up research so you need to supply greater amounts of funds to the universities and to the educational institutions because one of the challenge that we discussed is less than 1% of the educational institutions are actually doing high quality research and one reason being lack of financial resources so it is being suggested that we need to supply requisite amount of financial resources to the state universities and institutes so that more you know younger population is incentivized to take up stem fields okay because what we 
looked into right now is we have very less researchers as compared to the other countries. So this we need to address. And lastly, exchange of students should be encouraged with foreign university for facilitating knowledge transfer. <laughs>